Alright. Uh, now, Garden Ministries. We are here. We then finally started on YouTube. Uh, thank you, Brother Michael Miano, for allowing uh, me and Brother Mike to come up on your platform in order to uh, present the information uh, of our book, The Circumcision and Uncircumcision of Genesis Chapter 1. Uh, I definitely appreciate that. And if you have not, make sure you get the book, The Circumcision and Uncircumcision of Genesis Chapter 1, Mysteries of the Garden Revealed. Yes, indeed, I am an author. So, yes, the book is available on Amazon in hard copy. Or uh, you can, uh, but yeah, right now, we don't got the website no more. We're working on it. So, you can only get it in hard copy. All right. Y'all know the point of this channel is to show people the spirituality, the true meaning of it all, biblically. The true meaning of it all, this is what this channel does. It breaks down the information. So, what we're going to do, we're going to pray to the Most High that whoever has an ear to hear, let this message be for them. Let them catch it on the replays, or even if they catch it 10, 20 years from now, 100 years from now, 500 years from now, let it open their hearts to your true meaning in your word. Let the, the grace of God, the peace of God, ruin our hearts forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you have not, let's just add some people in the room which I don't mind uh, if it's just me I know I did that plenty of times before but let's see I'm just going to go through and see if the Lord wants anybody to come in and listen to the lesson this lesson isn't like your normal lesson where we go inside that Bible and miss you everything the Bible says. No, no, no. This Bible uh, group is based off of ancient Hebraic knowledge as well as the knowledge from the people who have crossed over. Yes, indeed. The people who have died went over to the other realm, the realm of the invisible, and came back and explained what they saw, as well as people who went into the ancient Eastern text where spirituality began and explains to us what it all actually meant back in the days before it was written down in literature and misused and abused. So hopefully the information reaches whoever it needs to reach. But y'all know, we start with um, listening to the people who have crossed over first, who have went into the other realm, or who have learned deeper information than we know about the other realm. We listen to their testimonies, their teachings, and then we show how it correlates with the Bible. Once again, this group, this room is not, I repeat, is not here to give you a literal rendering of the Bible. You got churches and other groups that do that. I'll let them have fun of it. This group, this room is to actually show us the true meaning of it all. The true meaning of life and etc. And how the Bible was meant to give us that understanding. Not what we're trying to present today. So, let's get ready to get started. We're going to go to an NDE, near-death experience, that after life in God, it says, this will give you goosebumps, with Roberta Grimes. Roberta, R-O-B-E-R-T-A, Grimes, G-R-I-M-E-S. Next level soul. So, Let's go through and listen to some of this ancient information. Once again, this isn't meant to tickle your ear. 
make you feel good about being a Christian, make you feel good about cracking the Bible up two or three times a week or once a year, or you celebrate Christmas and make you feel happy because you think you're doing something for Jesus. No, this room isn't for that. This room is to tell you, hey, you had a life before you came to planet Earth. You was alive before you came to planet Earth. And in your real form, not your flesh form, which you are in right now, this isn't your real form. But in your real form, you was giving a guide, an option. And within that option, you agreed to come to this planet, what we call Earth. You agreed to go through all of the hardships that you go through. You agreed to have your family and friends. You agreed to all of these things. And something called a Bible was given to you. To help you stay on course of your mission to save planet Earth from itself. Now, some believe that you was brought down here for a punishment. For you to get away from some of that karma energy. Others believe that you could be a guardian angel sit down to help other people. Regardless of your belief, one thing we have in common with the near-death experiences, this isn't your final home. This wasn't your first home. You are visiting on Earth. Some visit a long time. Some visit a short time. But you are visiting on Earth. This is not your final Destination, this wasn't your first destination. You are here for a specific reason. And when your reason is done for, if you got off course or stayed on course, once you hit that expiration date, you must then go back to your original home and speak on the things you did or did not do. The problem is people get caught up in this world, thinking this world is the final place. Thinking is all about this world. It's thinking is all about pleasing self and having all your needs wanted in this world. Live like there's no tomorrow and etc. Which I do agree. Enjoy yourself. But what I don't agree with is to make it at us acting like this is our home. We're just here on vacation. And this is how I live, people. I live, I'm at peace because I know I'm on vacation. I do some things wrong on vacation. I do some things right on vacation. I have hardships on vacations, on this vacation. I have entertainment on this vacation. I love on this vacation and I've hated on this vacation. I laughed on this vacation. I've cried on this vacation. But at the end of the day, it's still a vacation. This isn't our final home. This is just another pit stop. And I live like this is another pit stop. So, that's just my life. So, let's get into some of this information by Miss Roberta Grimes. And then we're going to correlate her information with the Bible. Let's get ready to rock and roll, people. I'll pray to the most high. It's going to take about 15 minutes or so once we go through all her information. But if you ain't doing nothing, this is the perfect time. Grab a coffee, uh, donuts, Pop-Tarts, whatever you want to grab, a sandwich. Relax and let the word of the Lord, true understanding, pierce through your heart. Right, try to get this woman right. Try to do it this way. Come on, Miss Roberta. All right, here we go, y'all. Right. All right, this will be fine. Why is it more atypical? Yeah. Yeah. 
they were all the same. So then tell me exactly, so tell me what happens in the dying process based on your research. The, the, the dying, a natural death, and not all of us have natural deaths, but people who are, when, before you enter your body to be born, you, you choose two or three with your advisors, you choose two or three exit points. Usually one is relatively early in, in uh, your life, or uh, around the age of 20 or earlier. One of them is at midlife, maybe 40s, and one of them is in old age. And your higher consciousness chooses, you don't choose when, when you're going to leave. But, but as you are approaching one of those exit points, if, you, if your higher consciousness decides you've gotten enough out of that life and, you, and that's the one you're going to take, about a year before that exit point, you decide, okay, you're going to exit then. And typically, if it's the, the first exit point that you choose, you will die in an accident. Many people who die, young people who die, will die in an auto accident. Most of those young people who die in an auto accident, that's a normal exit point that they have chosen. It seems like it, it's an accident left, it's not. It's, it was a chosen exit point. Um, typically in middle age, it's cancer or some kind of exit like that. Um, in old age, it's an old age, of course, a death. Um, People, when you go to a celebration of someone's life, very often you'll see that they were wrapping up their life during that last year. They they took a trip. They they were were um, making up with uh, with relatives or friends that they hadn't seen in years. They were sharing the uh, uh, the, the secret codes with their wives. I, I mean, oddly, people are wrapping up their lives and they didn't even know they were going to die, but then they they die. Um, my first book in this field was called The Fun of Dying, and I can't tell you how many people... All right, so in other words, what she's saying, before we incarnate on Earth... Once again, y'all, I do I take all this stuff seriously. Uh, I believe it all explains everything. I believe it all makes sense. So, hello. Try to share the room on Clubhouse. A lot of people don't want to come in because I'm not saying what they want to hear. two more times and I'll continue on one lifetime 
So I'm going to go back home. And when I'm home, I would decide with my spirit guides, my elders, my helpers that follow me throughout my whole entire life that's invisible. I would decide with them if I should come back in another life or should I finally stay home. So that's where she's at right now of one of the things. Let's continue on. It's the next one. On the bed, but you can't do anything for them now. So, having heard what I'm just saying to you, you'll do that. You'll follow your mom, your childhood pets, whoever has come for you, you'll follow them. And what happens is, they'll be hugging you, they'll be saying, come with us, and you will happily do that. Now, you won't be going far, because dying is very much like changing channels on a TV set. In the room around you now are hundreds of channels. And if you had a TV, you could tune them to channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five. Right now, you, your mind is tuned to your body on what you might call channel three, a very low channel, which is this material reality. When you die, all that happens is that your mind tunes to a slightly higher channel in the same place. There it will pick up a whole new reality in the same place. And the, and the people who have come for you, your mom, your childhood pets, your spirit guide, they will guide you in raising your vibration just enough to pick up that new channel, which is the, actually, it, it, you might call it the afterlife, but really it's just, it's just the astral plane in the same place where you are now. Which is what where near death experiencers go. That's where they that's also where near death experiencers go. Got it. And and how about out of body same thing, out of body experiencers like people who Absolutely, same place. Okay. The afterlife is a very small part of the astral plane. In fact, near death experiencers who are on an extensive near death experience trip will often come to a place and be told you cannot go any farther. Mm -hmm. If you do, you will enter the place where the dead are. And your silver cord will sever and you will have died. You will not be able to go back. It's really, because it, 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 when you keep saying silver cord, and I've heard that concept, by the way, the silver cord, the this long you know, cord that connects us. I Very remember, long cord. It, could, it goes to the end of the universe. In fact, it, but what, it, it does, it does. And the thing that I just, when I remember when you keep saying it, I just remember the... Okay, so in other words, what's stated here, when a person has a near-death experience, uh... They have a silver cord that's a wrap that's attached to their body. Now, the Lord is so remarkable when He uses the visible to explain the invisible. When a baby is born, they have a umbilical cord attached to them, and that attaches the the baby to their mother. And they're inside of that realm or inside of the stomach of the mother. And once that umbilical cord is severed, once it's destroyed, once it's detached, the baby can no longer enter inside of the mother and get nutrients and life from her through that umbilical cord. So the Lord used this makeup to explain to us how the other world works. So we, our souls have umbilical cords attached to our bodies. And if we go so far outside of our zone we're supposed to be in, that umbilical cord detaches. And you can no longer go back to that place that you was because you can no longer be sustained in that place. You see how the Lord uses the natural to explain what happened in the invisible but another thing is when a person 
dies, they really stay within the same places that they are at. The only difference is the frequency changes. So now they can see what's going on in the invisible world because they, them themselves are invisible. And this world on earth becomes a little less, well, not less, not a little less, a whole lot less unlikable once they experience the marvelous and gloriousness of that world. So, they're in the same place. It's just, a, it's just like you in a house. And this house has closed doors. You can walk through that house all day, every day. Same house. But once you go through a door that has been closed or locked, you now can experience a different room, a different atmosphere. So that's what happened when a person passes. The world, the true world, is opened up to them, and they no longer have the restraints of a physical body. All right, let's keep going on. people have more trouble doing. So explain, what are the next levels? Level four and, and level five are also parts of the standard Summerland level. We, all, all of us will try very hard to get to level four and level five. Once we are, in, and to do that, we will, we will reincarnate repeatedly on the earth. The trouble is there is amnesia when we come back. Mm -hmm. We don't remember why we did. You wonder why babies cry? Babies forget. And people, we forget when we enter a baby's body again. And, and yes, we have to, I think, I think of it as shrinking ourselves in, to get back into a body. And then we, and we've totally forgotten why we did that. And then we, we get born, and it's such an awful experience that, that we really cry. Um, and we do this repeatedly to experience the negativity that we cannot experience in the afterlife or in the astral plane. They are not negative at all. But there's a lot of negativity here. I don't need to explain that, people. We are all here. But we don't understand just how bad this is until we go back to the afterlife or to the astral in a, in a near-death experience or, or, or by astral traveling. And we see how great it is there. And, and you know, what, do I, what can I tell you? Um, but we come here to experience that negativity. Gradually, by coming back here repeatedly, we gradually raise our vibratory rate to level four and finally to level five. Once we get toward the upper level, a part of level five, we cease to need to incarnate. These are the ascended masters, the Jesus is the Buddhas of the world. Yeah, well, yes, Jesus is way above that at this point. At this point, yes, but at one yes. point he was at a level five. We all have to walk before we. All right, so now, in other words, what's going on here? It's just people in the afterlife, right? Once you die over, uh, they put a little ranking system on it. It depends on how good you have done on Earth. It depends on how high your rank is. And the, pro the point is you're supposed to keep coming back to Earth over and over again so you can increase your vibrations. You can increase your ranks. And you increase your ranks so much that you don't have to come back no more. And you can actually be among the elites and the... Uh, other world. Don't forget, this world is just a reflection of what happens in the invisible world. So just like we have elites over here, we have bosses over here, we have teachers over here, we got people that's in higher positions than other people over here, they have the same thing in the invisible realm also. This world is just a reflection of the invisible realm. Whatever you see happening in this world, it happens in the invisible realm. The only difference is there's no negativity in the invisible realm like it is over here. So, when you're over there, 
you're kind of stuck in your position. And the only way to get out of your position is to come back over here and undo some of that negative karma that you got. Undo some of that uh, or find a way to overcome negative things so you can increase in level. So, you, me, everybody on planet Earth have died before. You, me, we all have been in the heavenly realm before. You, me, we all have been walking around with the angels or higher beings. You, me, all of us have. The reason why you're on earth, the reason why I'm on earth, the reason why your parents are on earth, the reason why your kids are on earth, the reason why everybody is on earth is because everyone wanted a higher level than they were at in the spiritual realm. I know it sounds far-fetched. That's because we have spiritual amnesia. You have spiritual amnesia. Once you're born, you forget everything. You got to start from scratch. No one has an advantage over anyone except certain people like Jesus the Messiah, who was able to understand where he came from, what he was able to do, and to bring that information to earth. But we're going to find out why in just a second. But the point is, you're on earth I'm on earth right now because we want a higher position in the invisible realm that we had. We want a higher job. Some people get caught up in livelihood here. Some people get caught up in living life on earth, not understanding you came to earth so you can live life greater in the other realm. But it's been flipped over. Somehow we have been convinced that we're supposed to live our greatest lives here and whatever happens in the other realm happens. No, you didn't came here several times over several lifetimes. You have been several people. You have went through several experiences. You have died several times. And obviously you nor I have gotten it correct yet because we're here right now so you are thousands of years old and you don't even know it i'm thousands of years old i just found it out recently we're all thousands of years old we all have walked through this world we don't walk through the the old days we don't walk through the modern days we don't went through the biblical times and now we are here in the 21st century time of technology, but we have seen this earth several times and I'm tired of seeing it myself, but it's our job to learn so we don't have to keep coming back. So when a person dies, when a person goes on to the next realm, it's business. We have emotional ties to these people because we have love energy inside of us. It's love energy. It's a love spark inside of each one of us that connects one person to another person. So when a person is gone, that connection is felt and it feels like that connection is going to leave, which makes people sad. But in reality, the true part is that person ain't gone nowhere. You just can't see them no more. And now they are learning whether they did what they were supposed to do on planet Earth to receive a higher order or if they have to come back usually within the same family. So, yes, you could have been your great-great-grandmother. You could have been your great-great-grandfather. You could have been your great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. You could have been your great-great-great-great-great-grandmother. We come back several times, usually within our same family. Nothing dies. Energy never dies. It just transforms. All right, so let's continue on. All 
right here. Hold on. I speaking to another guest the other day. They're saying young people are leaving religions by the buttload because they just don't, they're not connecting anymore. They're, they're like, no, there has to be more to this. I, I, I need to, I want to, I don't need the middleman. I need to find my direct connection to a source. And these truths who have been around for thousands of years are starting to bubble up with shows like myself, with the work that you're doing and things like that. Would you, would you agree? Oh, of course. Oh, big time. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, one thing that a lot of people uh, ask me all the time is, do we plan our lives? Yes. And I'm, so, so please elaborate on how we plan and why we plan because people, you know, people listening a lot of times they ask in the comments and things like that. They're like, why would you want to get cancer? Why would you want to have an abusive parent? Why would you want to go through pain in this life? And then why do some people obviously, you know, get born with, a def uh, you know, some sort of physical deformity and others are born into a billion dollar, you know, uh, and it becomes a billion dollar heiress and never has to truly worry about those kind of things for the rest of, the, of this life. Why? It seems so unfair. Some people can't even get water right now as we speak and other people have 5,000 houses and six private jets and they, it's three people. You know, it's like two, you know, two people. Like how many more houses do you need? How many more, you know, th stuff do you need? So there seems to be an unbalance and, I, and I'd love to hear what you think about that. In regards to the planning of life. The hardest lessons are uh, really the hardest, single hardest lesson you could have would be wealth. People, people um, are there, people in our real lives um, are afraid to plan wealth because it, it's the most, it's the hardest, most dangerous lesson you could have. And it's too easy to set yourself back by eons spiritually if you give yourself wealth as a lesson. And um, so people, people shy away from it. People don't want to have that lesson. Um, people plan um, hard lives because then you, you get the most value out of those hard lives. And so people eagerly plan to have uh, very, very hard lives. They plan diseases. They plan poverty. They plan a lot of people um, in, the, in the United States. Uh, plan who, who for example were slaveholders planned to be um, uh, uh, poor black people in adoring Jim Crow because they needed to have that balance and and uh, and you know get get rid of the the, the negative ne negativity in their uh, their the karma if you will from uh, having been slaveholders all right so in other words, the answer, why do I go through what I go through? Why have my life been so hard? Why does it seem like nothing works out? It's because you planned your life that way while you was in the other realm. You had some karma. You had some negative energy that was over you that was stopping you from progressing on to the next level you had all of this these things that was holding you down holding you back so you and your spiritual your you and your spirit guides who's there with you right now beside you you can't see them but they directed you to this lesson you got two spirit guides you know in cartoons uh they used to show uh, an angel and a devil sitting on your shoulders. Well, they get this information from somewhere, and it's not accurate. You actually have two spirit guides, or more. Some people have more. I have more because I have met a couple of mine. But anyway, that's a different story for a different day. I'm not going to get into the spookism right now. But you have two spirit guides or more. I was upgraded to get more. Uh, I didn't talk about that story so many times. I sound spooky now, I know. But anyway, you got two spirit guides that, that, that follows you your whole life. 
and you plan with those spirit guides how your life could be most beneficial for you to increase your status. You see, your spirit guides used to be one of us, just like one of us, but they increased their levels and they was able to get the job of being spirit guides. They was able to get that promotion. So your spirit guides know exactly what you're going through because they went through it themselves. Notice we haven't went into nothing religious yet. We ain't talked about no heaven, no hell, no none of this. What else? It sounds sci-fi-ish a little bit, but I'm here to tell you, these people that died and crossed over, they said this is exactly what's going on in the other realm. So why? The Bible. Why the Quran? Why this other stuff? If that's not what's really going on in the other realm, we're gonna find out. But yes, your spirit guides, and you sit down and you planned out your whole life, every single negative thing that you've been through. You planned it out in order for you to learn something to promote to help yourself promote yourself uh spiritually so when you cross over that's another tick on your resume for your promotion but how you responded to the hardship either keeps you in the same place that you're at or it increases you that's, that's on you. Or it can take you down, actually, if you get too negative and you're getting more negative stuff on your resume. All right, so let's, let's go on to the next one. We're almost done with this, and then we're going to hit the Bible up. People need to come into the, these. This is the only place we can grow spiritually the way we need to grow spiritually. These bodies are precious, and people want to get into these bodies and have these tough, tough lives because we can grow... I, I don't care who you are, if you are under the age of 70 and in reasonable health, I can help you make this your last Earth lifetime. Mm. How your is that? last Earth lifetime. How do you do that? Follow the teachings of Jesus strictly, and it's your last Earth lifetime, guaranteed. Mm. That's a bomb. I've heard, I've heard That's all. Let, let me saying. play it again. Let me play it again. I do a little bit. Y'all want to know why... Jesus, why the Bible? If it's not real, if what the Bible described is not real, if it's all made up, why the Bible? Why do we need the Bible if what these people are saying is true and we ain't worried about no fire, no brimstone. We ain't worried about Jesus coming back. We ain't worried about the earthquake. We ain't worried about the sky cracking. We ain't worried about none of that. Why do we need the Bible in the first place? Why I'm worried about Jesus? Why we just can't go out and have fun? Why we can't party hardy? Why we can't do drugs? Why we can't be selfish? Why we can't just live our life because in the afterworld, nothing is negative and we just can have a good old hearty time. Why do we need the Bible? Let her explain it again. Let, let, let's let the lady, the nice lady, explain it again. Oh, yeah, YouTube, sorry. Fair usage, YouTube, fair usage, fair usage. But let's let the lady explain again why we need Jesus in the Bible. Um, we, the lives on earth are precious. We People need to come in. And she said it because all of these people are aborting the babies. See, abort, abortion it's a lot deeper than people think. You got Alex, right? The elite. They wanted uh, uh, black people to kill off their babies and etc. That's what it was. Um, but it backfired and etc. This is no shot. This is just reality. But it's because hold on, what just happened here? Okay, there we go. It's because they stay in their leadership roles. They can stay leaders, right? They can stay re being reincarnated as a leader. 
They don't care about standing the other round. They like to have they cookies and cakes and, and, and everything here in this realm. They want to keep uh, reincarnating over and over again so they can stay in their same position. So what did they do? They can't, they can't get in a worse position of negativity because they explain to you exactly what they're going to do to you so they don't have that karma on them and you pick it for yourself. So in other words, they want to stay rich while they're in this world. They create things like uh, pharmaceuticals that you can get addicted to. They created things like nicotine that you can get addicted to and etc. In order for them to stay wealthy. In order for them to be the creators and stuff for it. But that negative energy don't attach to them when they cross over. Because why? They give you, they tell you, this can kill you. This is addicting. This takes, if you take too much, this can happen to your liver. This can happen to your heart. So, they doing all of these things, right? In order for that type of karma not to be on them. And you're picking your own poison yourself. But then they do other things that have that karma attached to them, like the sacrifices, and etc. So, when they die, they can come back and enjoy their kingdom again. They ain't worried about no spiritual stuff. They love this world too much. But in the process, we were we were believing the sauce. We was believing them, believing that we need to abort, believing we don't need to have kids, believing that uh, we need to be uh, we need to stop having babies. Uh, babies are wrong. And then you look at a person, you t- a person tell you, I, I got six, seven kids. They're frowned upon and etc. Uh, because that's that's what they want to do. So what the woman is saying is that we're not supposed to be killing these babies because each baby is a body for an entity in the other realm to come over and try to upgrade themselves. So when they cross back over, they can, they maybe could be in a higher position. So it's actually about community love. Wanting your neighbor to do better, so you give your neighbor a body. So she was just showing how precious it was for human life. And the same thing goes for us. For us being born in the same family over and over and over again. Well, if you start, if you stop having kids, stop their bloodline, then eventually you're not going to have another family to go into. I mean, you're not going to have a same family to go into. You're going to have to go into a whole nother family, going through a whole other stuff, creating a whole different uh, scenario and et cetera. So it all makes sense what the lady was saying, uh, why we don't need to be uh, aborting babies and stuff. But then she get into heavy. She said, hey, this is for the people who's tired of this earth and don't want to cross over no more, who don't want to come back. Not the elite. These are for the people who don't want to come back to planet Earth who say, man, this is some crap. I don't want to go through this again. I'd rather just be over there chilling where I was in in the first place. I'm good with my promotion. I'm good where I'm at. For those people that don't want to come back, but, but, who say I actually want a promotion, she said she's going to show you how to obtain that. So you can get your little promotion and don't have to worry about coming back. And all she said was, follow the teachings of Christ. That's why you need a Bible. That's why Christ showed us how to not come back and at the same time receive the highest promotion we can receive. Christ showed us how to do it. She said, all you got to do is follow his teachings and she promised you in the afterlife everything will be okay. This is why we need a Bible. It's the best guideline we could have in order to raise our frequency. Let's keep going. Into the these this is the only place we can grow spiritually the way we need to grow spiritually. These bodies are precious and people want to get into these bodies and have these tough, tough lives because we can grow 
I, I don't care who you are. If you are under the age of 70 and in reasonable health, I can help you make this your last Earth lifetime. How is that? Last Earth lifetime. How do you do that? Follow the teachings of Jesus strictly, and it's your last Earth lifetime, guaranteed. I've heard, I've heard everything you're saying. I've heard in multiple places. Everything you're saying it is so true. It's just the, the having to work things out, having to get things. And another thing that a lot of people are confused about is why they're here. Because of course we all forget why we're here. And I, I can help you know. See, that's the thing. It's not that hard. So that's my question. How can we find out what our mission or our purpose is in this life? It's to learn to love completely, forgive completely. And once you have done those things, there's nothing more to be done. You are at the top of level five, and that's it. So, but if you come, but if your, you know, your mission here is to be uh, an architect because you're going to discover a new way of building. See, he ain't trying to hear that love stuff. He trying to make it something more. She's like, no, bro. He, no, this is what I'm saying. It ain't It ain't about that, you know. You try to stray away from Jesus and talk about the other ascended masters and stuff. She's like, no, bro. All you gotta do is follow the teachings of Jesus. Well, what, well, well, what about what's your mission here? What about if I want to be an architect? No. Your mission uh, what you're supposed to do is learn to love and forgive. That's what you need to do. All right. So let's let's uh, get ready to end it. Uh, let's see here. What Bible do you read? Hello. And how I do you see. know it's the right Fair use, YouTube. Fair use. One for Fair use. Don't take my video down. Fair use. But, but see, the way consciousness works is that when, if, if 10% or so of the people on Earth raise their consciousness vibrations by quite a bit, it will raise all of our consciousness vibrations materially. And all of us will grow spiritually. We don't all have to do it. Just a, just a significant percentage of us need to. Because all our consciousnesses are directly connected. It's all really one consciousness. In a very real sense, there's only one of us here. Um, we're all connected directly. One, one question I wanted to ask you in regards of your research on the, other, on the afterlife. What is your understanding of time um, there versus here? I mean, I, my theory is obviously it's not a theory. Time is a man-made element because it's a revolutions around our sun. And if we didn't have our sun, there would be no time as we know there it. There is no time at all. Exactly. It's, it's a man-made, it's a man-made uh, you know, thing. So what is your understanding of time there? How, how is it even calibrated? Is it calibrated? It isn't. There is no time there at all. It doesn't, it doesn't go in either direction. It goes, there is no time. That's what so. That's what I've heard from other near deathers that they say is like a, a blink here, a blink there is a lifetime here because there's no real reference point. There's not like there's there's not like you know our relatives are sitting like Jesus another twenty years before this guy gets here. Like it's not that way. No, it, it, it there is no there is no sense of time passing. There is no time. Okay. All right. So we got it right there. There's no time in the afterworld, and etc. And he was talking about how we look at time off based off of the construct of the sun, and you know, and all this stuff, sun and moon, and etc. Well, let's show some of the basic principles that they said in scriptures, right? Let's show you how this information is so in keen with the Bible. That it's amazing and that people just misunderstood the Bible based off of hyperliteralism, concentrating on the story more than the point. And it has thrown them into not understanding the Bible, therefore, they're living their life all wrong and etc. Look how these people live. They don't care about no Bible anyway. But let's 
let's show you some of the information that she said was correct. First of all, he was asking, what is the mission of the Bible? I mean, sorry, what is the mission on planet Earth? What are you supposed to be doing while you're on Earth and etc.? She said, all you're supposed to be doing is learning to forgive and love, right? Learning to forgive and love. She said, if you just follow the basic training of Christ, you will become a level five ascended master. You don't even have to worry about coming here no more. So let's see if that makes sense. If you go to, is it Matthew 22? Matthew 22, right? Let me see. Go back to Matthew 22. Yeah, Matthew 22. Listen to the conversation that Christ has with someone who knows the Old Testament, right? Matthew 22 and 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they was gathered together. All right, now listen to this right here. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempted him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, listen to what he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. So you see what that lady said the mission was. What? She said the mission was to be able to forgive and to love. You got Christ 2,000 years later. He's looking at the Bible and he's saying the point of the Bible the, I mean where the Old Testament that they had was about loving the Father and loving your neighbor. Mm. True forgiveness is what she stated also. And she stated, if you follow the teachings of Christ, you won't have to worry about coming again and you can ascend into that next level. All right, let's hit the Bible up real fast. Oh, yeah. She also said, he also asked about time, right? There's no time over there, but there's time over here. He said, you know, over here we rely on the sun and the moon. It's a construct of man used for time. But on the other side, there is no time. Let's see if the Bible agrees with that. Revelation 20. Is it 20? Nope. Revelation 21. Listen to what Revelation 21 says. Let me make sure it's 21. It might be 22. No, nope, it's 21. 21. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun. Hold on, my bad, y'all. Show it on my screen right there. The city had no need of the sun. Neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So, in the city of heaven, there's no sun or no moon. What that means, there's no time. Here, time is measured from the sun and moon. There in the city, there's no sun, there's no moon, there's no tide. See how those principles of the afterlife is actually stated throughout scriptures? And we're going to show you more and more. So when a person passes over here, and so much time passes on and on, and you forget about them, you don't think about them as much, when you cross over, you find out that it's just like 
They just crossed over. It just happened because there's no time over there. It's just one long thing. In fact, over there in that world, you are already there. You are there with your loved ones already. You just got to catch up with the time over here. Over there, there is no time. You're there chilling and, and you're having a good old time with your loved ones and your soul circle and etc. And you're waiting on your body on planet Earth to catch up with you. It's very, very, very mystical and sci-fi-ish, but that's what's going on. Alright, so now, let's run through these scriptures real fast. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, right? Isaiah 55, and let's look at some of the teachings in Isaiah. Remember, we're going to talk about now how to raise your vibration. The highest vibration you have is love. Makes sense, don't it? Highest vibration is love, lowest vibration is hate. If you want to go over there and get a higher paying job, you got to raise your vibration. If you die, they help raise your vibration in order for you to see the invisible realm. So when people cross over, the first thing they say they feel is a, a, a immense amount of love. So much love they feel when they go over. Why? Because they are raising their frequency. They're raising their vibration. Love is the highest vibration an entity can have. Therefore... You're feeling that love because you're raising your vibration. That's that's what's going on. But Isaiah 55 and 1. Ye that thirst, go to the water. And all that have no money, go and buy. And eat and drink wine and fat without money or price. Hold on, what? Notice. People don't really get what's going on in the Bible. You read that, they just sound like words, don't it? Man, what is, what is he talking about? What are you talking about? Go and eat and stuff. But once you put on your spiritual eyes, you're able to see something more. It says, ye that thirst, thirst, you need nourishment for your body need to be able to survive go to the water go to your nourishment and all that have no money go and buy so if you don't have no money how are you going to buy anything so this represents poorness you have no money you are poor but still go and buy, which means that you have the ability to receive blessings and nourishment without financial, uh, um, uh, uh, I don't, what financial institutions or, uh, or monetary gains and etc. So a person who is considered poor still have the ability to receive nourishment. You don't need money in order to receive this type of nourishment. Understand what the Bible is saying. Verse 2. Wherefore do you value at the price of money and give your labor for that which will not satisfy? Hearken to me and ye shall eat that which is good and your soul shall feast itself on good things. Well, so what is it saying here? You got value. You value things like money. But with all that money, you got to labor for that money and etc. So you're getting this money, you're laboring, but you're never satisfied. Have y'all met some people that's not satisfied? 
so people can have it all and still not satisfied? Yes. Hearken, he said, hearken to me, listen to me, and ye shall eat that which is good. Listen to me, I'm going to give you some good food. And your soul, your inwardness, not your outwardness, your inwardness shall feast itself on good things. I'm going to give you something that you can personally feast on, that something inwardly will benefit from. You do all of these things outwardly and you're never satisfied. So I'm going to show you how to get satisfied. I, Isaiah, who has the Holy Spirit, keep let's keep talking to him. Three, give heed with your ears. Listen up, y'all. And follow my ways. Follow the ways of Christ. Hearken to me. Listen to me. Follow me, and your soul shall live in prosperity. Your soul, your inwardly, your inward being shall live in prosperity. He didn't say nothing about your outward being. He didn't say nothing about outward stuff. He didn't promise them an easy life. That's not what he promised them. He didn't promise them riches and finances and all of that stuff. That's not what he promised them. He promised them, though, that if you listen to me and if you follow me, inwardly, inwardly, you will feel something that you can't receive outwardly. Let's keep going. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant. The sure mercies of David, ruling and reigning. Behold, I have made him a testimony among the Gentiles, a prince and commander to the Gentiles. This is the ruling and reigning, etc. Nations which not know thee shall call upon thee. So this is talking about the Messiah, and we are in the body of Christ, so this is dealing with us too. Nations shall call upon thee, and people which are not acquainted with thee, shall flee to thee for refuge, for the sake of the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. So just as the people flock to Christ, you being in the body of Christ, people that you don't know and don't know Christ will flock to you also because there's something you got going on inward that can help those individuals outwardly and inwardly also. See, something is happening spiritually here. Seek ye the Lord, and when ye find him, call upon him, and when he shall draw nigh to you, let the ungodly leave his ways, and the transgressor his counsels and let him return to the Lord and he shall find mercy for he shall abundantly pardon your sins. Listen to what is being said through the Holy Spirit right there, through that heavenly knowledge. He says seek the Lord. See, that's the problem today. A lot of people they say they Christians. A lot of people read the Bible, right? A lot of people, hey, I pray every day. I pray over my food. I do this, I do that. But do you seek the Lord? See, this is why I can come on these apps, right? I can talk to people all day, every day about the Lord for hours and hours. Why? Because I have seek the Lord and I have found him. I have seek the Lord, and I have found him. I, I don't have to make statements that's not true or, or try to get people to believe me and, and et cetera. I don't have to use trickery and sorcery in the way that I live. 
I seek the Lord and I found him. And that's the problem. A lot of people don't seek the Lord. They just read and say, what I read makes sense. Let me put this together and that together. You see, when these people have near-death experiences, right? They're giving us a different understanding than what people who read the Bible give you. You talk to a person that reads the Bible, ask them what they get from the Bible. They give you this long spiel. Then you ask a person who have died and crossed over what actually happened over there. It's totally different from what the person trying to teach you the Bible is saying. Totally different. So different that a person who has not had one near-death experience will say the people who had the near-death experience is lying. Oh, they lying. They made that up. No, they did. They, all thousands of them lying. Uh, ten thousands. All, everybody's lying. They don't say that in the Bible. Meanwhile, it said, seek the Lord, and when you find him, call upon him, and when he should draw near to you, listen to what happens when you find the Lord, and he comes unto you. When he enters into you, see if what this says goes along with the near-death experiences say. It says, let the ungodly leave his ways. <clears throat> when a person has a near-death experience, what's the first thing they say? I come back, I quit my job, I want to live another life, I want to do things right, I want to this." Give love. I want to help people. I want to help my neighbors. I want to be there for my kids. I want to be there for my husband. I want to do things correctly this time. I don't worry about this worldly thing. I just want to experience love, love, love. Let the ungodly leave his ways and the transgressors his counsels. Once you find the Lord, the Lord coming unto you, you don't get counsel from transgressors anymore. I don't care if they have the name of pastor, minister, brother, sister, priest, any of these things. If they're telling you something out of what you feel from the Holy Spirit is correct, stay away. Now, what you feel has to go along with the Bible and Christ's teachings. And we're going to go there in just a second. Remember she said, follow Christ's teachings. You will no longer have to come back. So now, it says, let the ungodly leave his ways and the transgressors his counsels. And let him return to the Lord. Where's the Lord at? In the spiritual realm. But let him return to the Lord. And he shall find mercy. For he shall abundantly pardon your sins. You find the Lord. You find mercy. You're no longer worried about sins. They have been pardoned. You're no longer worried about your old life. Your old life has been taken away. You have now resurrected. You are in new life. You're walking in newness of life. Your sins have been pardoned of you. The New Testament ain't doing them but saying what the Old Testament said. Verse 8. For my counsels are not your counsels. I don't listen to transgressors. I don't need help from nobody. I'm the Almighty. Nor my ways as your ways, said the Lord. He says, follow my ways. Ain't that what he said? He said that in verse number... Let me see. Three, follow my ways. Verse number seven, leave your ways. Verse number eight, my ways are not your ways. So if you're not doing things like the Lord did them, you need to stop. You need to leave that alone. Quit worrying about the parties and all the time. It's good to go and mingle with your people. 
It's very good. It's good to have family and stuff. But that's not a priority. Quit the drunkenness, the highness, the over-mingling, the partying, all of those things. Follow the ways of the Lord. And if you follow his ways, what did that woman say? I promise you, you won't have to come back here again. So now, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at the Messiah himself now, right? She said, if you want to know the key, if you need the key, it's found in Matthew. Hold on, my bad. I didn't even see the brother. Did he leave? I'm just now looking down. Oh, my bad. Well, he left. But uh, I know him anyway. He, he's going around telling people he's Jesus. I don't know why people keep doing that. But anyway, Matthew chapter 5. Now, let's listen to Christ, right? This is Christ. Once again, she said, if you want to know the cheat code about not having to come back and reincarnate over and over and over again, listen to the Messiah. If you do what he say, I promise you, you will enjoy your real life, not this life. You don't have to. You won't have to come back no more. So let's listen to what Christ said. Sorry, y'all, got my incense going. Matthew five and one. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was sent, his disciples came unto him. He op and he opened his mouth and taught them. So now this is Christ teaching the people. He finna tell you his ways, right? So let's learn his ways and see if his ways are like your ways. Let's see if you got the same ways. Verse 3. Blessed or blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are you poor in spirit? Are you lacking and you know that you're lacking? You know that you need this, this Lord. You know that you need God. You don't have an abundance of God. You need him. You yearn for him. You seek him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, not in body. In spirit, you know that you need more. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Remember, Isaiah said, seek and you will find. Verse 4, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. This is not talking about people walking around crying. These are people that are sorrowful in their spirits. They're sorry for the things that they have done. They're sorry for leaving the Lord. They're sorrowful for how they treated others. They're sorrowful for all the wrongdoings they have done. They shall be comforted. This is what the Holy Spirit came to do, to comfort those that was mourning. Verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. See, all of this is kingdom of heaven talk. This isn't earthly talk. Blessed are the meek. Are you humble? Are you... Uh, uh, normal not someone who has to be glamorous all the time not someone that want to always stick up and stick out but are you humble are you meek who worries about who's not too worried about outward stuff and brands and all of this stuff blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then we not find that in Isaiah. He said, if you thirst, come to these waters, seek me, seek the Lord, and you will find him. Blessed are they. Have you been hungry and thirsty for righteousness? Have you been lacking for the kingdom have you put someone 
before yourself? Have you suffered for someone else? Have you hungered and thirst after righteousness? For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What did that woman say? You learn how to love people. You learn how to forgive. That's the only missions you have in the world. Once you die, you will be okay. Blessed are the merciful. Are you? Have you been merciful lately? Or have you been trying to eye for an eye a person? Have you been trying to do vengeance on a person? Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Have you saw God yet? Have he visited you? Have you had dreams? Have you felt him around you? Have you felt that warm feeling? Have your guides spoke to you? Have you met your guides? Have any of these things happened to you? Are you pure in heart? Are you honest? Are you honest? Do you really want people to succeed? Are you kind? Are you thinking about others? No matter how hard they are to you, have you said, I'm going to help you anyway. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is what Christ stated. If you're not pure in heart, you're not going to see God. If you out here eye for eye and two for tooth and people, you're not going to see God. If you're, uh, I'm not going to do that because they didn't do this. You're not going to see God. He's making statements. He's telling us. Verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. That's an inheritance right there. If you are a child, you have an inheritance. Are you a peacemaker, do you go around starting drama? Is your name always in drama? Do you like drama? Have you ever been the biggest person? Have you been the biggest person the majority of the time? Have you been the biggest person every time? Blessed are the peacemakers, not part time, not one time or two times, but every time. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I ain't got time for to be beefing. Oh, uh, you trying to get over? All right, get over. All right, man, go and get over. I'm on vacation right now. Don't get over. You get over on me on one vacation, but when I go home and I can stay there and you got to come back to vacation, then we're going to see who did it the correct way. First, a lot of people don't care about that right now. I care about that right now. You should care about that right now. The world should care about that right now. Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, you ain't been had to be killed for the scripture. You have you haven't been persecuted to death. But have you tried to follow God? follow Jesus and someone demonize you because you want to do things the right way? Blessed are you who's per persecuted for righteousness sake, for doing the right thing, for doing the things for the kingdom, for doing things for Christ. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. Not the kingdom of earth, but the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So when you try to live like Christ and doing the things that Christ uh, do, did in his lifetime and people don't like you for that, when people talk evil against you for that, when people want to persecute you for that, blessed are you. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, 
for great is your reward in heaven, not in earth. See, did Christ talk about a reward on earth? Was Christ trying to get you to be rewarded on planet earth? Blessed are the rewards. In heaven will you get your blessing. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is this for good for nothing, but to be cast out and be, to be trodden under foot of men. Salt was not only for uh, uh, taste back then. It also was used to... Uh, Keep things, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, to keep things fresh. They put it on meat so the meat wouldn't spoil and etc. Sometimes they put it on corpses so the corpses wouldn't stink that bad and all that stuff. But salt had plenty meanings back there. And when the, when the salt quit being salt, it's no longer good for nothing. If you are the salt of the earth, if you quit doing your job function, then you are meant to be cast out. You're not good for nothing. You have to come to earth and try it again. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. Are you acting like a light? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are a city. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Just like that candle gave light to the house back in the days because they didn't have electricity. But just like the light bulb in your house that gives off light, that's how you're supposed to be to the world. The world is in darkness. You're not supposed to be in darkness. You're supposed to show the world the light. A person's supposed to look at you and see something different. They're not supposed to see the average person. They're not supposed to see their community. They're not supposed to see themselves. They're supposed to see something different different they're supposed to say hey there's something about that person see that's what i try to do i try to live like christ so when a person says something about me i want them to give a good report oh that guy oh he's kind oh that guy oh he's loving oh he's a good guy he's a blessed one right there i don't want them to say about me oh he's evil he's dirty he's hey he's trifling watch out for him that's not a candle that's darkness you're supposed to be a candle. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. People are supposed to see that you're different. So that they may see your good works. And glorify your father which is in heaven. You're doing this but you're giving props to the father also. I can see God in that individual. Verse 17. Think not I am come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. But to fulfill. Hey y'all don't think I came. When Christ said when I came on the scene. Uh uh. Don't think I'm doing away with the law and the prophets. Because I'm talking to you guys like that. No. I'm going to fulfill the law and the prophets. Let me show you what that means. For ver verse 18. For verily I say unto you. Till heaven and earth pass. That was reference to temple. One jot and one tittle shall and no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He said that hey, things are going to happen when you, and when those happen, then what I came to do has been fulfilled. But he said he came to fulfill the prophets, which was his, his suffering and all that stuff. But he also said he came to fulfill the law. What is that talking about? How do you fulfill the law? Romans 13, 8 through 10. Remember, that woman said, if you listen to Christ, you won't have to come back again. I promise you. Christ said, I came to fulfill the law. So let's find out how he fulfilled the law. Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another had fulfilled the law. For this, 
Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Christ said, I came to fulfill the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Christ came to show love. And if you follow Christ, this will be your last journey on earth guaranteed you will start vibrating higher than high you will start seeing the spiritual realm open up to you your spirit guides will start visiting you in dreams you will start getting more blessings from heaven you will be able to talk out loud and your spirit guide will be able to take that to the messiah and the messiah will be able to say give them what they asked for i know I talked about it. I said, Lord, last year, I said, well, actually this year too, Lord, I want to make more money. Lord, I want a new car. Lord, I want a polygynous relationship. Lord, I need a woman that's going to be on my level. Lord, I need my kids to get it together, to be good kids. We're working on that one. Lord, I want my kids to be intelligent, got that down pat. I want my kids to be talented, got that down pat. Lord, keep me healthy, got that down pat. As healthy as I know right now. Lord, show me the true meaning of the scriptures. Came across the near-death experiences. Lord, I want to talk to you more. Talk to the Lord in visions, dreams, all of this stuff. It opens up once you start vibrating higher. You can't get Christ. You can't be on a vibration of hate trying to enter a vibration of love. Trying to get these things answered. It doesn't work. This is why Christ came on the scene to show you how to raise your vibration so you can be able to talk to your spiritual guides and they be able to help you out. He came to show mankind how to raise their vibrations so they can actually get the benefits from the spiritual world. And once you cross over, you don't have to come back. Christ came to show us the correct way. All right, so that's Matthew 11. Uh, I'm almost done. 28 and 29. Listen to what Christ says. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. Come unto me. Ain't that what Christ, I mean, ain't that what it was said in Isaiah? Seek ye the Lord. Now here come Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Same thing was happening in Isaiah 55. They was working and working and working and was never satisfied. So he said, I'm going to give you something to make your soul satisfied. So here come Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who wants some rest? Verse 29. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Have you learned of Christ yet? I mean the real Christ. Not with, not Sunday school Christ. Not church Christ. Not people who never really have studied the Bible and just, just read it one time, that Christ. But the real Christ. The Christ who's talked about in the Synoptic Gospels. The Christ who left his words for you to do. Have you learned of that Christ? He says, take my yoke and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Ain't that the same thing he said in Matthew chapter 5? To show you the meek will inherit the earth. Christ said, I am meek, which means he inherited the earth. And lowly in heart. He's poor in spirit. And listen to what he says. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. 
rest. Forget your body. Is your soul at rest? Have your soul found rest yet? Forget that body. Are you mentally at ease? Are you mentally stressed? Or are you mentally rested? Or is your mental straight? Are you worried about the world and the things of the world? You worried about bad relationships, bills, uh, uh, bad friendships, family ties being destroyed or brought to bed. Are you worried about all of those things? Uh, have you put on Christ and live like Christ dealing with love, love, love? And if you do, he says you're going to find rest. That's when people look at me and like, man, yeah, like you don't got no care in the world. I don't. I'm on vacation. This isn't my home. Everything I'm blessed with is a gift for vacationing. What about that person? I don't care. That person did that to you. I don't care. I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to put myself in certain positions so it can happen again. Because I'm not insane and want different outcomes. Well, if push come to shove, I don't care. I learn from my mistakes. But am I mentally hurt, mentally distraught, depressed, and etc.? I don't care. I have found rest. Verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hi, right, y'all. We're almost done. Matthew 18, 21-35. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, listen to what that woman say. We're on earth to find out how to love and have ultimate forgiveness. Then we'll be straight. Let's see what Christ taught then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. In other words, how often should my family, my friends, my acquaintances, the strangers, anybody around me, how often can he do something against me and I forgive him for it? Stealing. How often do I got to forgive his stealing? Abrusiveness. How often do I got to forgive the abusiveness? The lying. How often do I got to forgive the lying? How often do I got to forgive all of these things that's against me? All of these sins against me. How often do I got to forgive the Lord? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. So don't count it up. Oh, man, I done forgave him 490 times. So I don't have to do it anymore. Because Christ says only 70 times seven. No, that's not what he's saying. He's just making it be alluded because Jews like the number seven and 70 and 10 and etc. He's just saying for an infinite, an infinite amount of times until... Something happens. Now listen. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. So he's going to use that forgiveness to talk about the kingdom of heaven now. He's going to use a parable on how the kingdom of heaven works. He said there's a certain a king that would take account of his servants. And when he had begin, begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. So he's getting presented by a soul, by a person that owes him 10,000 talents out of his kingdom. He's in debt. This person is in debt to the king. Verse 4, 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. In other words, you owe me. The Lord, this is how the kingdom of heaven works. You owe me. You can't pay me. Get out. But not only do I want him out, I want his 
family out, his wife, his children, get them all out. I want them to be sold, and whatever money I get for them, that would be my payment for the way that you owe me a debt. Ain't we? Ain't we? Ain't it good that Christ wiped out all debts, all sins was pardoned? But let's keep going on. Verse twenty-six. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. The servant said, Lord, I know I owe you. Show me some grace. Show me some mercy. Be patient with me. Don't we like when the Lord is patient with us? Don't we like it? Verse 27. And he said, and I will pay thee all. I'm going to pay you what I owe you. Give me time. Be patient. Verse 27. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. All praises to the Most High. He was given over to the words left by his servant. Through the hardship and the servant being honest and crying it, to the Lord. The Lord loosed him from his bonds and forgave him of his debt, forgave him of his sins. But, verse 28, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. So now, the fellow servant is in the same predicament. Same predicament this person was in. This is how the kingdom of heaven works. The father forgave you while you was indebted to him for your life. Once you sinned and transgressed in the spiritual realm, once you needed, uh, once you had that negative karma, the Lord could, the consciousness, the source could have destroyed you off the planet. But he made a way so he don't have, so he can't destroy energy. He made a way he can't destroy you. He made a way that you could work off that debt, which was hence this life that we live in, in these material bodies, you can work off that debt of sin that you owe, that bad karma, by doing good things. But, while the Lord parted you in the spiritual realm, you get down here and people owe you. Do you give them the same pardon that the Lord gave you? Do you give them the same forgiveness? forgiveness that the Lord gave you. Let's keep going on. Verse 30. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. The angels in heaven, hit the, your fellow brothers, your angels, your your guardians, your uh, the ones that's watching over you, right? These two witnesses that's walking over you, watching over you, your spirit guides. When they see the way that you act, they go back and tell the Lord. They go tell the superior, those that has a superior roles to them. They go and let it be known, hey, the one that you gave uh, 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 mercy to, he ain't giving mercy to nobody. The one you gave mercy to, she ain't giving mercy to nobody. Verse 32, then the Lord. After that, he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Should, shouldest not 
thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. You so you seek me. You had compassion on to me. You told me all of these things that you was gonna do, and I pardoned you. But you don't have the same type of heart to pardon someone else like I pardoned you. And his Lord was robbed and delivered him unto the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So there's no time limit on how many trespasses you should forgive in other words. There's a the stipulation on how you can't deal, you shouldn't deal with certain people anymore. But there's no time limits or stipulations on forgiving. Just like the Father has forgiven you time and time and time and time again for you taking his grace um, for granted. For you, feeling like, oh, I'm not going to die tomorrow. Oh, okay, nothing happened to me. Oh, I'm going to do this right here. The Lord ain't going to get man. The Lord ain't going to do that, man. For you to have this holy Bible and not take it seriously, for you to say, oh, man, you know, I, can only, I can only deal with the Bible so long, man. I live in reality right now. I live I live in, in, on earth. I can't live like they live in the, in the old days. That's the old way of doing things. I live in a new way. For, for the Lord not to destroy you, because his word is everlasting and never ends. For the Lord not to Thanos snap your soul away. He forgives you time and time again for your stupidity and your ignorance. He forgives me time and time again for my stupidity and my ignorance. What I look like not forgiving somebody else for their stupidity and their ignorance. This is what the Lord is saying. This is what Christ is saying. If you can't forgive your brothers, Christ, I mean, the Father ain't going to forgive you. He going to let you come back to earth time and time again without help, without blessings. Until you get it correct, he's going to keep letting you come back. And you're going to feel like those tormentors got you. Those, those devils, those satans, those adversaries. Everything's always going wrong. I can't breathe. I don't, nothing lets up. I need ease, Lord. Why are you not listening to me? Why are you not hearing my prayers? The Lord, he can't be real because he let this happen to me. He can't exist because he let that happen to me and etc. He's going through, you're going through all of these things and he's not lifting a finger to you. He has given you over to the tormentors. Let them believe what they want to believe. Let them torment what they let, let the tormentors have them. When they cross back over, we'll try again. This is what's going on. Right? So the woman said ultimate forgiveness. Here in the gospels, it's talking about ultimate forgiveness. The woman said love. We read Christ talk about love. See, these stories have meanings. Quit looking at the flat reading. All right, this will be the last verse. John 10 and 10. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what the thief comes to do. The thief comes not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. A lot of y'all have came across some thieves. Not people, really, that's stealing just, just uh, material things. Some people steal time. Some people kill emotions. Some people destroy all of your good nature. They have a lot of negative energy on them. And they bring it to you. Those thieves comes not but to hurt you. Comes not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Christ, Christ, I am come that they may have life 
and that they may have it more abundantly. I'm going through hardship. I'm going to give you life more abundantly. I'm going, no one loves me. I'm going to give you life more abundantly. Lord, they laughing at me for following you. I'm going to give you life more abundantly. Lord, I can't do, I, I, I just, I don't feel like doing things the old way. I know the Bible said, but I can't do it like that. I'm not going to do it the old way. Christ said, if you do it the old way, I'm going to give you life more abundantly. Father, Christ, I just can't do it. I can't see myself living this way. It's beneath me. Christ said, if you live that way, I'm going to give you life more abundantly. I'm hurting. I'm in pain. I'm crying. I'm feeling sorrow, depressed. Come unto me, all that labor. Learn of me, and I will give you rest. I have come to give you life more abundantly. Learn of me. Trust me. I am the resurrection, the way, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. I'm going to be the door. And if you come through me, I promise you I will open it for you. How do I come to you, Christ? And let me into you. Let me enter you. Let the Spirit, Holy Spirit, enter you. How do I do that, Christ? You display the fruits of the Spirit, my son. Long-suffering. Patience. Meditation. Prayer. Love for your neighbor, love for the Lord, all of these things. And I promise you, you keep doing that, I'm going to come into you and give you life more abundantly. And then when you cross over, you're going to be vibrating so high that when you cross over, you ain't going to need to come back. I'll pray this to the Most High. Thank you all for listening in. This is Elvin Israel. From the Garden Ministries, also AOSD, Assembly of Sound Doctrine Chandler, also one of the instructors at RPK, that's Resurrection, Prophecy, and Kingdom. We're all about getting your subconscious mind correct. A lot of people want to tell you out of the carnality in the Bible, but as Paul said, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life. That I, your inward eye, need to wake it up. It's time to display love for your neighbor. Like Christ loved his disciples. He loved them so much he was willing to die for them. That's how much love you got to have for your neighbor. You got to forgive. Right? You got to forgive. And you got to love. Help spread the gospel. Gospel of peace. Gospel of love. If you do that, you will live life more abundantly. You will vibrate so high, you won't even have to come back to this earth plane once you leave. All right? Let me get ready to close out in prayer and thank everyone that listened on. Let me follow you, uh, brother. Thank you, man. Everyone that listened on, thank you indeed for listening on and listening in. Uh, we'll try to do a Q&A like in two weeks. Y'all know I just got off my interview, so uh, I really can't do one tonight. Uh, thank you, Brother Michael Adams, for uh, listening in for what you did. Uh, thank you, Apple. I'm still praying for you and, and your hardship. Uh, thank you for listening in this whole time as well. Thank everyone for listening to the replays. Thank you for the people that's going to be on YouTube and Facebook. All praises to the Most High. Let's bow our heads and pray out. Uh, Lord. Thank you for letting us see your word. Now, we know that there's a lot of things in the Bible that we can lean from and glean from and, and present it in a way that's, that's easy on the ears, easy on the mind. So thank you for allowing me to be one of the vessels that you have chose in order to deliver these messages in a way that any and everyone can comprehend it. Uh, also, Bless all of the souls of these people who have had all of these near-death experiences and have died and crossed over. The information that you provided them with has been a game changer. It has been a lifesaver, Lord. And it has helped me personally understand the things that you have been trying to tell me over the years. And hopefully it helps other people that's going through this awakening process that have questions also. I pray that we get the spirit 
of the Bible and ingest that instead of the carnality and let the spirituality that you have left rule and reign in each one of our hearts. We know that our loved ones that's here that has passed on and etc. are all in one big family and we know that we're a part of that family and we pray that you keep us a part of that family. Let all of the broken hardness and those that mourn, let them be comforted swiftly on the, our butterfly wings, Lord. Uh, bless us, bless our spirit guides, bless the, uh, our soul family, bless any and everyone who has an ear to hear this information. Uh, we will continue to be resurrecting from uh, death into life and let your Holy Spirit come and rest on each and every one of our men mental states uh, I pray for more wisdom and clarity and let this message reach whoever it's meant for and Yahshua Yahweh Yeshua Yahshua Jesus to Christ's name we pray to the Father Amen and Amen thank you guys for listening and this is Elvin Israel from the Garden Ministries and we will be back if not next week it will be the week after that pray for me as I have safe travels next week if it's no one I'm not going but if it ain't, I'll be there uh, shortly. So y'all pray for me, safe travels, pray for each other, and uh, let's continue this work. Thank you, Most High. And y'all have a good night. I am closing the room now in 10 seconds. All right, thank y'all.